It feels tough at first trying to always keep positive about the, the marketplace, right? We know the marketplace is challenging, but the simple stuff makes a difference. And you have to recognize that instincts come first, and then thinking follows. So when you're dealing with customers, or you're dealing with your employees, and you're dealing with a difficult situation, you may have where you're angry about something, and you act and you respond. And then afterwards you say, um, yeah, I'm just going to let email. I read that email and I press send, and then I go, whew, I should have already um, checked that twice. Um, so for everyday situations, for example, I don't know how many of you, when you woke up this morning, felt to come here. Everybody, right? Yeah. Good. But what about when you went to work Monday morning? Sometimes you feel, uh, yeah. all right. But you're thinking brain cells, yeah, 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 I don't know. And you start to think about it. I want to tell you, no matter what kind of day you ever had, if you didn't have as bad a day as this guy. It was the 1800s, and they were building a railway in the US from the, the East Coast to the West Coast. And Phineas Gage was one of the best supervisors, reliable, everybody liked him. You could depend on Phineas. And then they had an explosion. And an iron bar went through Phineas's cheek and through the top of his head. And they take him to a bar and give him two pound a dollar or whatever. I didn't know when they do it. Right? But they put down the bar, and a couple of months later, Phineas went back to work. Right? Phineas don't mess around. And this is actually a true story. There's a picture of Phineas posing with the iron bar. Now, what happened to Phineas when he went back to work is he went from being one of the best employees to being one of the worst. Right? Phineas showing up for work late, cussing everybody, can't finish a project on time. And he was one of the best before. What do you think happened to Phineas? It, 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 the bar part of his brain. So if we look at the brain and we start to think about it, which part of the brain do you think mash up on Phineas? The thinking part. So when Phineas wake up in the morning and he don't feel to go to work, what happens with you is you know me say, but I have to think about it, then I go to work. Yeah. But Phineas don't have the thinking part, so what do you do? Call him. You go to sleep. <laughs> All right? Phineas boss telling me you know something you're like, no me. I say, well, I could come down now, boss. I could eat him up. Yeah. But the thinking part is don't cough down the bus. Right? But Phineas, don't have your thinking part. So what do you do? Cough down the bus. Right? How long do you think it takes for you to form an opinion of somebody? Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Because if you look at these two things here, these two shapes, I want you very quickly, don't think too hard. One of these shapes is Kiki and one is Booba. So how many of you think the shape on the left is Kiki? Put your hands up. How many of you think the shape on the right is Kiki? Put your hands up. For some strange reason, and I don't know why this is, 90% of people who see this say the one on the, on, the, on the right is Kiki. Now, why you call it a Kiki? You have all kinds of different reasons. One, it's Kiki, it's something like a cannot shot, kip, can, and then the K and the eye look like the pointy thing, you know? You have all kinds of reasons, but guess what? You Kiki or Booba somebody within two seconds, you decide you're Kiki. And in two seconds, nah, you're a Booba. Right? Because this Kiki and Booba, Booba are not words and those are not shapes. But you use some part of your judgment to form an opinion very quickly. <laughs> because everybody has one of these, you know. Everybody, you know, at the end of the day, when you're not genuine <laughs> about dealing with people. And you quickly try to assess what's going on. You can't see this very good, but this is a welcome mat that says, I come in and when I turn it upside down, it says, go away. Go away. One is that thing you see, net promoter score. That is the feedback from our customers. You know that simple thing, how likely you to recommend us? We track that on every single flight. Now, when we look at the scores, of course, as a company trying to deliver service, we don't always get it right. So there's some scores that are high on some flights and some scores that are low on some flights. What we try to do is make, make sure we pick out all the scores that are high and we bring in the flight service manager from that flight into a forum with our directors to say, you know, I said something, what are you doing different? How come you always consistently scoring so high? And it's based on feedback from customers. And an example we just got recently was somebody bought an upper class ticket with us from Miami to, to London. And the tickets cost 4,000 US each. And these people, these two old people, they fly with us all the time. And they, their idea of our, our, our flight is they must sit down by the bar and drink champagne whole day. <laughs> Halfway through the flight, the champagne ran out. So this flight service manager have to make a decision. What do I do? Because these are people who buy a $4,000 ticket and champagne run out. So his decision on the spot was he would go in duty free and take three bottles of champagne out at about $100 each and serve um, the customers that champagne. Now, at the end of the day, he's not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to just go and take duty free and serve the customers. But he made a decision on the spot. And what we have found is that when you listen to customers and you empower your employees, 
we have a rule, and I'm sure you've heard it before, it's better to ask forgiveness than do what? Ask, ask permission. So if you're going to be using customer feedback, one thing that you have to be sure you're going to do is be able to respond to it because what you don't want to do is get customer feedback and somebody say, no, we can't do that here. No, that's against the rules. No, I have to check my supervisor on that. And so I would advise, uh, basically advise you that if you're going to involve customers, your commitment to making change and empowering your employees to respond to customers has to be as strong. It's not a one-way street. I'll never forget when I met, I met my publisher in Jamaica. I was on holiday and I met this guy. And he agreed to publish a book if I write the book. So I wrote the book. I actually spoke to one of the professors at Harvard. He put his name on the front cover. And I, the guy sent two tickets to me and I went up to New York to meet him. And he says, you know what, Andre? I like, I like that book, you know. I'm going to print a thousand copies. And I looked at him and I said, yeah. So I don't think you like the book that much if it's only a thousand copies you're going to print. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to Jamaica and I'm going to print two thousand copies. All right? And when I sell those two thousand copies, I will give you a call and you tell me when you're serious. All right? So I went back to Jamaica and I had to try and figure out how to do this. I, I ain't on the floor writing no book. All right? So I had to learn how to lay out the book. I went to friends and got them to pretty much agree to buy the book in advance. And that's a similar, similar situation to things like what? Kickstarter. Where you have an idea and people fund your idea based on the fact that when you complete the idea, they will get the, the, the product. So they prepare to buy into your idea. And really, I sold 2,000 books just really going to friends and saying this. You have $20. I ain't telling them it's about a book, right? So I, I, I could have $20. And they say, yeah, man, what do you need it for? I say, don't worry. I'll um, give you a book in three months. Right? So it was really getting support from family and friends for small amounts, especially if you have something like a board game. Right? is getting a commitment for people to actually pre-purchase the product before it's complete. Now, in order to do that, you have to have a good mock-up of your product. Right? Because one of the key things that you find on companies like Kickstarter um, is that the video that you have that demonstrates the kind of product you have makes a big difference in terms of the contributions you get. So the, real, the word for that is really called crowdsourcing. And what you try to do is you try to finance your project on the promise of the project, of, of, of the finished product in the future. And in the Caribbean, because of the way that we are, in terms of our communities, I think it's one of the positive ways to go, especially when you have a tangible product like a, like a game. Yeah? Find people who are interested, get them to purchase it in advance of the actual production. And you give them a discount. So if you purchase now, the game is $100, you get it for $80. Yeah? When you win them as a real customer, you win them for life. I'll never forget, I was a medical rep when I first started. And I went by the doctor and said, no, you all know Cataflam and Voltaren? Yeah. For pain. Yeah. I used to sell that. I got my doctor and said, doc, I have some Cataflam here for you. He said, go ahead. I said, I have some Voltaren here for you too. He said, I sound good. He said, what else do you have? You finished? I said, yeah. He said, well, right. He take all the samples, all the documents, and he throw it in the bin. He said, don't ever come back here again. Right? Who tell you you can just come here, you brand new in this business, you come into my office, and you never got introduced to me. I don't know who you are. And I said, well, doc, I, I didn't, I, uh, uh, right? I said, well, here what, we could do this two ways. I could not come back, you know, I mean, uh, I'm a rookie, I'm now starting the business. I said, but tell me, do you want me to come back? How are we going to go from here? And one of the things I like to say is, is it over? And when I ask a difficult customer if it's over, and he says yes, I say, good. If it's over, off the record, what went wrong? Off the record, what happened is last week a man come here in a shirt and tie with a cutlass and he hold me up and I say, no med reps here unless I get an introduction. And I say, well, doc, you cannot tell me that, right? So when I find out a difficult customer, what I like to do is end the relationship. And when the relationship is done, say, now that we're done, we're not doing business again, so we can talk frank. How come this didn't work out? And what happens? You're right back in the business, you know? Because now we're telling you for the first time what the problem was which he might not have told you before because he's down in this difficult behavior going through. I'm not saying that everybody should try that. I'm just saying there's one approach when you have a difficult customer that you really find you're not getting through with. And you want to ask him off the record. You want to get him to, to really tell you what the real problems are. Because sometimes you're just being difficult because you recognize that that's the way to get things done. Expecting things to go smoothly. I go out looking for zombies. And I say, all right, hey, no, zombie number one, let me shoot you down. Zombie number two, you there too. Right? And I just try to move ahead in the game. All right? And I want to tell you that your connection with your customers through your employees, one of the most important things you do. But as an entrepreneur, you have to live your brand, however you define that brand is, and that is what's gonna drive your process forward. So customer service is really the output of you having a good relationship with your employees. The output of the customer service is revenue. So we look at that strategy map that we looked at earlier on. Employee, 
process, customer, revenue. And as we start to think about it, the challenge that you have is how you keep positive. How do you keep positive? It's not easy. And I want to tell you that your perspective on your situation, that self-conversation that you have as an entrepreneur, going through difficult times and building your brand is very important. So 